Well, let's get some reaction now from the Brexit party. Brexit MEP Matthew Patton joins me here in beautiful, rainy London. Hey, it's a typical, typical December evening it here is, in London. It is, it is. But I'm sure the weather is not dampening the spirits of those who really want to see Brexit done. According to this exit poll, the Brexit party has failed to launch, but the Conservatives have got a thumping majority. Do you come at this with mixed feelings? Uh, actually, I don't. I think this is a tremendous victory for Leave, um, and the Brexit Party is all about leaving the European Union. Um, and if you think back to March, just six months ago, uh, where we had Mrs May, where we had every prospect of a second referendum, it was the Brexit Party, which was kind of a movement that came from the British people, uh, that ultimately removed Mrs May and helped the Conservative Party, I would say, move to a much stronger position on leave. And what's happened this evening, I mean, a really historic evening in so many ways, has actually seen all that kind of come to fruition. So I, I am obviously disappointed that the Brexit Party hasn't picked up a seat or two, although first past the post makes that really difficult to do. But, you know, we're, we're six months old, but we kind of feel like we've won the argument. Well, with the Brexit Party, is there a problem in modern politics, which you have maybe emulated, that you let the perfect be the enemy of the good? I think that's a really interesting idea. I, I, I don't think that's true. I, what I do think is that there are some serious questions that come out, not just of the general election, but, but over the last three and a half years, whilst this country has been absolutely in a crisis about Brexit, which is to do whether our electoral system, first past the post, is fit for purpose. I mean, one, one, one thing that will really come clear in this election is how so many voters were effectively disenfranchised. They were either living constituencies where really the decision was always going to be what happened. Um, and in our case, we stood 317 candidates down, which meant for a lot of people there was not a Brexit party to vote for. Mm. So. So electoral reform, what we call changing politics for good, I think is going to be a growing issue as we move forwards. And the other thing I would say is, even though Boris has won with a thumping majority, even though we're definitely going to be leaving the EU, there are still really big challenges in the next few months ahead to make sure that the deal he gets from the European mm. Union is good enough to do, allow us to do but the deals we want to do with deal. you guys. Hasn't he already done the deal? Anyway, Nigel Farage says this is Brexit in name only. Yeah. So... Are you just going to ha have to accept the deal that's been done and the free trade agreement that's agreed with the European Union that has to be done within the next six months? OK, so, so as you've said in your very kind introduction, I'm a member of the European Parliament. Mm. I was in Brussels last week. And if you talk to the Europeans, Michel Barnier, those kind of people, th their view, this is not a done deal. Mm. And what they mean by that is that they reluctantly accept the UK is going to leave, and they certainly will do now. Mm. But the second stage of this, after Boris has served his withdrawal agreement, is we've got something called a political declaration, which is all about now negotiating a free trade agreement. Now, that has technically been agreed in principle, mm. um, but Boris, and we would absolutely agree with him, has said that that deal is not good enough. So your aim to do is ch it's to change the flavour. Well, so, so that deal absolutely has to be strengthened. Okay. Currently, that deal means that we have what's called regulatory alignment or a level playing field, yeah. which, which means that the terms of our deal with Europe have to effectively be on the same terms as now. Europe still stays in control of our tax yeah. and things. But we want to do a competitive deal with Australia and America and all those things. We want to change that. And to do that, we're going to have to make the Europeans change. And the, Boris has promised that he's going to do that by the end of the next year. The Europeans are saying it's impossible to change, to break their red lines by that time. So okay. uh, believe me, as much as it pains me to say this, we are going to be arguing about Brexit stage two um, in the spring next year. Because all this really has so. to... Uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, it definitely is so. Well, just quickly before I let you yeah. go, and I know you're in the European Parliament yeah. and the free trade deal needs to be sorted out, but yeah. how do you read the numbers in Scotland? The SNP yeah, getting p potentially 55 of the available 59 yeah. seats. You know, Do you get behind Scotland now to leave the UK? No, we're, we're definitely a unionist party. And, and again, you, you know, tonight is a night, I guess, of celebration for leave, but it's come at a cost. And one of the costs was when Boris went back to the EU a couple of months ago and redid Mrs May's deal. One thing he did is something he said he'd never do, which Mrs May said she would never do, which she put a border down the ROC. So Northern Ireland already is kind of sitting outside of where we are tonight. Yeah. We absolutely, you know, 
I, I, there's a large part of Scotland that wants its independence. We had, a, we had a referendum up there recently. The majority said no. We're desperate to keep the union together, and we want to win those arguments too. OK, Matthew Patton, good luck, and we'll see you back in the European Parliament in no time. appreciate okay. your time this Thank morning. Thank you very much. And that is it for us in London for now. The results will start coming in thick and fast in the next hour or two. But for now, it's back to Kieran. Laura, we'll check in with you.